Hello, this is uh, ADAC47, and uh, I posted a photo in the aviation community called, uh, it's a Google Plus aviation community called uh, World War II Planes, and it showed a uh, P-38 uh, with a watermark, and someone asked me, I think it was uh, Rock Westfall actually, uh, asked me how to do that, uh, how to create that effect. So this is a quick tutorial on how you can use um, Photoshop to do that. Uh, I'll also show just a little bit about how to edit and restore photos. Uh, so I'm running running Adobe Photoshop Elements Editor. Uh, let's just show you the version. It's uh, Elements 11. This is the inexpensive one. It does 90% of what you really need done. You don't need to pay hundreds of dollars for it. I think this was about 40 bucks, 30 bucks, something like that. So that's what I'm using. I'm using it on a Macintosh, so things may work slightly differently on your platform. So anyway, um, <clears throat> let's bring in these two photos. This uh, first one is, well, actually, I'll drag them in one at a time here. It's going to be my uh, foreground figure. It's actually laid down in the background layer in Photoshop, but this is the one I want to emphasize in the uh, in this composite, and I'm going to put another one on top of it and uh, use transparency to uh, make it be less visible, uh, and it'll become the watermark. So I can load that one by dragging its icon over here. So these are the two pictures I'm working with. Okay. Uh, and to make a watermark, I simply need to copy. So I'm going to do a, uh, select all of it. It's a Command A on a Mac. I believe it's Control A on the PC. And I'm going to copy that to the clipboard. I'm going to switch to the other uh, picture that we want to superimpose it on. I'm just going to paste it right on there. And you can see the sizes are slightly different. We'll take care of that in a minute. Right now, uh, I want to point out that this is the second picture is put in its own layer called layer one. And we can control the opacity of that layer, so we can make it more or less transparent. Um, on our background uh, image is the original one we want to be the main one that's emphasized. So, here. to decrease the opacity, we simply go here and adjust the slider switch. And you can see we can now fade it out very gradually and make the background picture, what I want to be really foreground, uh, more visible. And you can play around to get the level of watermark there. It's, on, it's hardly visible. And here it's too visible. So you play around a bit. Looks like I need only about 10% uh, visibility or 90% opacity uh, for this to be fairly decent. So let's just go with that. You can play around uh, with different settings yourself. Uh, and now I've got the problem that uh, because the two pictures aren't the same size, we have this band showing. So I'm going to fix that by simply cropping it, and I just go up here to the Crop tool, and I select the smaller area, and I'm in fixed ratio, so it's guaranteeing that the aspect ratio will be the same as my screen, uh, but you can use normal and make it any size you want, or you can set the fixed ratio to be what you need for your screen. Um, and then I'll simply ask Photoshop to crop it, go up to your image and say crop, and bam, that's what we're left with. So now we don't have that uh, band going around that we had earlier. So that's pretty good. That's what we want. All we need to do now is save it. Um, so we go up to file, save as, because we don't want to save over our original images. Uh, and it selects by default the PSD. This is a very large file. It'll be about 10 times larger than a JPEG. So um, I don't care about saving that. If I was going to do editing in the future, I would save it this way, and it would be whatever it would be. Uh, could be up to 10 megabytes, depending. Um, so I'm going to go down here and select JPEG, and it makes it as a copy. It gives us some warnings here, because when we copy it to JPEG, we're going to lose distinctions between the uh, layers. So if you don't keep the PSD file, you won't be able to recover and edit it in the future. So that's just a warning. It doesn't really matter to us because we are just doing this for a demonstration. Okay, I need to slide this over so you can see it. Uh, it gives us the compression option. I find eight 
uh, to be pretty good out of a possible 12. Uh, if you don't want to compress that much, you can slide this up here to 10, say, and it will take about 575 kilobyte KB. And up here, to maximum, we're up to 1.4 megabytes in the file size. I find that if I pick 8 and I compare it to one that's 12, I can't really see much of a difference unless I zoom way, way in. Then you can see some compression artifacts from the JPEG for the more highly compressed uh, image. So 8 works pretty well, unless you want to allow people to zoom, zoom way in. Okay, And that uh, put the copy way over in the right where you couldn't see it, because I'm only uh, recording a portion of my screen here. So I drag it over. Let me go ahead and close these two. Get them out of the way. We're not going to save the PSD file. We didn't make any changes here. So if we bring this in now and look at it, we can see it's just the same version that we had, blended. And if we, uh, ooh, it's a messy desktop. This is the original uh, uh, file in preview mode, and we can now look at it in full screen, and that's what you get. It looks pretty good. Okay. Quit out of this, and let's uh, run Photoshop again. Where do I have it? There it is. Okay. So that's uh, how to create a transparency. Uh, let me show you real quickly how to do uh, editing that involves touching up. So this is a photograph I got off the internet of a B-36 aircraft. And you can see lots of defects in the photo, especially if we zoom in. Um, we can see a scratch here. And we see some specks that are probably places where the emulsion got scratched off. It's hard to tell whether that's really part of the picture or whether that's also a scratch. So sometimes the judgment call, that is almost certainly a scratch there. And that certainly is a scratch. And these dark spots are particles that have gotten laid down on the picture over the years. And so we can correct all of that. Um, so here's how you do it. The two most useful tools are the spot healing, spot healing brush tool, which if you, you can adjust the size of it here, and uh, all you do is click, and I use Content Aware as a default. I won't explain the others right now, but that works. You can simply gra drag over a scratch, and it fades away. And you can even do pretty clever stuff here if we're careful you can get rid of a scratch, and it fills in what it thinks would be the proper background. Doesn't always work right. Sometimes you're better off using another tool that I will show you in a second. But we've pretty much gotten rid of that scratch. Okay? And I don't know if these are part of the picture or not, but let's suppose we think that they're not there, shouldn't be there. You just simply click and drag over them, and you've gotten rid of those blemishes. And there's another one. Okay, click, 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 gone. And you can vary the size of the spot healing brush uh, by simply sliding the slider here and make it much bigger. If you want to make a certain area like you can see a line there, it looks like it's not part of the original photograph. Uh, and this isn't doing a real good job of getting rid of it. So, anyway, there are some noise we can clear up. Yeah, that worked pretty well. Now let's show you how to use the other tool, and that's the uh, clone tool, which is similar, but it's going to allow us to copy an area in one part of the photo over an adjacent area, and that can be useful when the other tool, the spot healing brush tool, doesn't work right. Uh, when you're real close sometimes to a juncture like this, it's better to um, copy an area right next. So I'm going to press the Option key here and click. And that defines the area that it's going to copy or clone from. Okay, I press the Command key by mistake, so let me try again. Option, click, and I'm getting a change. Apology for my clumsiness here. I'm going to zoom in to make this easier to see. 
One more time. Option, click, and slide over. Gives us a little preview of what the edit's going to look like. And see how it's not clearing it all out? That's because the last time I used this, I used only a partial uh, opacity. I'm going to use 100% opacity. Go back, and now it will. That often happens. You, you set something up, and you forget to change it back, and you think you're getting 100% and you're not. But, so you see that little plus sign next to the circle. That's the clone area. That's where it's copying from. And you, if you use this too much, you'll start to see uh, herring patterns. Uh, that is, you're repeating the same thing on two areas. That's why the uh, spot healing tool is a little better if it will work. Okay, But in general, the clone is better if you have to make a patch right near a high contrast area that's changing uh, and you want to be able to just copy the adjacent area. So that's a quick tutorial on editing, just how you can blemish. I'm not going to talk today about uh, using uh, the blur tool uh, to allow a larger picture to show without pixels being, pixelization being a problem, or uh, color enhancement, color contrast, lighting, that sort of thing. Those are all more advanced techniques. But these two tools will let you correct an awful lot. If you scan in your old World War II photos that you got from your shoebox, they're real useful for cleaning them up before you post them. Okay? So that's it for this tutorial. Take care. I'll see you soon. Goodbye.